Good evening class. So let's get started. You need this investigation C4 that you got from class. Um, something to write with and maybe some color pencils. Two or three different colors would be good enough. Okay, if you lost this work, this handout, you can always um, go back to my website under today's video C4 and click and download the worksheet again. Okay, so today is about more circles and more angles and line segments. So far, you've only learned about central angles and inscribed angles. So let's review real quick. Where is the vertex of a central angle and where is the vertex of an inscribed angle? Well, for central, it's on the center of the circle. And then for inscribed, it's on the edge of the circle. Okay, that's nothing new. Well, that's not the only place that the angle's vertex can be. It can be inside or outside the circle. Okay, so we're going to take a situation of inside the circle first. So look at this circle here. It has two line segments and they intersect to form some angles that's it's in the inside space of the circle. There are actually four angles here. One, two, three, four. We're interested in angle X, which is this angle here, and angle Y, which is here. Let's see, we have an arc CF, it's 100 degrees, and arc GD, it's 70. Here's where you need your color pencil. I want you to highlight arc CF, it's 100 degrees, and that arc is captured by angle X right here. So color X here. Now take a different color and color in arc 70 degrees and that arc is captured by this small angle down here, angle Y. Okay, now let's reason this through. We're trying to solve for angle X and angle Y. Well, angle X captures a larger arc and angle Y captures a smaller arc. So you would think they would have different degrees, X and Y. However, if you recognize this, X and Y are vertical angles. You see that? They're opposite of each other, facing each other. Well, vertical angles are always congruent. And that means X and Y are actually the same degrees. They are. But how can that be when they capture two different arcs? One's larger and one's smaller. Well, the angle are the same, and they're actually the average between 70 and 100. It's the midpoint. It's in, exactly in between, or we can call it the average. So again, how do we do average between two numbers? We add the two numbers up and divide by 2. This idea again, add, then divide by 2. So you're going to take 100 plus 70 and divide by 2 and you get the angle X which is the same thing as angle Y. Well what's 170 divided by 2? 85 degrees. That's angle X which is also angle Y. Okay, So you can put X equals 85 degrees, Y equals 85 degrees. So this is the formula you need to remember how to do Add and divide by 2 gives you the inside angle. This is the formula you need. Okay, so let's try this example here. We have an angle on the inside of a circle. It's 88 degrees. That means this one on the left is also 88 degrees, but it captures a 75 degree arc and an unknown, 70, unknown arc HN here. We're solving for arc HN. That means we're going to use this formula, but go backwards. Okay, so I'm going to add the two arcs together. So here, I'm going to write it this way. Arc 1 plus arc 2 divided by 2 will equal the inside angle. Okay, it's probably the better formula. So arc 1 is 75 degrees. Arc 2 is unknown, so I'm just going to put x divided by 2 equals the inside angle, which is 88. Okay, since we have 
equal sign, we can make this into a fraction, put it over 1, and you can cross multiply. Cross this way is 2 times 88. Cross the other way is 75 plus x. 2 times 88 is 176. And now we just minus 75. x is equal to 101. So the answer is 101 degrees, this arc right here. Okay, so going backwards works the same way. All right, so that's the inside angle situation. Now, here's the other situation where angles can be formed outside of a circle. Notice the vertex here is on the outside space. These are two rays. Actually, the tangents touch the circle exactly once. Whereas here, this is formed by a ray that goes through the circle. So it touches the circle twice but the angle is formed outside. Here, one of the ray is a tangent. It touches the circle once, and one of the ray crosses the circle twice. But the thing is, the vertex is formed outside of the circle. So all this situation, we call it the outside angle. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. When the angle is formed outside the circle, how many arcs does the angle intercept? This angle here. So I'm going to highlight it so you can see. I'm going to need two colors. I'm gonna, this angle here intercepts this arc, and it intercepts this arc. Two. This angle here intercepts this small arc, and it intercepts this arc. Same thing here, this angle X intercepts here, and as it spreads out, it intercepts another arc here. Notice this arc is not intercepted at all. There's two of these here and not intercepted at all. And in this case, actually the entire circle is intercepted. Okay? But two different size arcs, a big one and a small one. Again, this is bigger, this is smaller, bigger, smaller. So the answer is, they intercept two arcs. Just like when the angles were formed inside, they intercept two arcs as well. Okay, so now we've already colored them, and now I'm just going to have to give you the formula. Is um, To do, an, the formula for an outside angle is this. Outside angle equals big arc minus small arc divided by 2. Okay, the formula looks similar to the one you had before, but instead of adding, we are subtracting. So look at the angle that we want. We want this angle here, angle X, but it's on the outside. It captures a 30 degree arc and it captures an 88 degree arc. It captures both. So to find angle X, I'm going to take the big degrees, which is 88 minus 30 divided by 2. 88 minus 30 is 58 divided by 2 is 29. The answer is 29 degrees. Okay. All right, so that's how you do that one. So just remember, when it's inside, the angle is inside, we add and divide by 2. When the angle is outside of the circle, we subtract and divide by 2. Easy enough. When the angle is formed, you know, the angle is equal to the difference. When you subtract, it's called the difference of the two arcs intercepted. And there is a formula written in a different way. Okay? Alright. Now, switch gear. We're not going to deal with angles anymore. We're going to deal with line segments now. And line segments are measured in like inches and centimeters, not degrees. Line segments are these right here. This is 6 inches, 8 inches, and so on. Okay. So when you have a line segment that intersects a circle, goes right through it, we have 
parts of a line segment. Like this part here is six, this part here is eight, and so on. It, this line segment here intersects into two pieces, but this line segment goes here and stops. So it doesn't go anymore. That's it. It only has one part. Here, it intersects inside, and it has it got cut up into two pieces. This line got cut into 15 and 8. This line got cut up into 6 and 20. So sometimes you get two pieces when the lines intersect. Sometimes you only get one piece when the lines intersect. Okay? So three situations we're going to look at. A, B, C. Let's look at circle A. Take a color pencil and you're going to color the 6 inch piece a certain color. And that six inch piece goes with the eight inch because it goes, it belongs to the same line segment. And then color the seven a different color, and the seven belongs, it goes with the piece five. They belong to the same segment. The six is called the outer piece, the eight is the inner piece, and together the whole thing is called the whole line segment. The seven is called the outer piece, the five is called the inside piece. And together they form the whole line segment. All right. Okay. How long is the entire line segment on the left? The one that has six and eight. The answer is fourteen. That's right. Six plus eight is fourteen. So I want you to write that down. Six plus eight equals fourteen. Okay. Now what we do is we take that number fourteen and multiply it by the by the outer segment six. The outer segment of the same line segment. So let's take 14 times 6 and see what we get. 14 times 6, 84. Okay, so we're just doing some multiplication here. Let's see. Let's do it for the other one. How long is the entire line segment of the other one? Well, this one here, it's 7 plus 5, which is 12. So write that down. Now, if you multiply it by the outer segment, and the outer segment is 7, so what's 14 times, uh, I'm sorry, 12 times 7? Oh, 84, same. Look at that. Same answer. Let's put equal. Okay, we got the same answer. So what we did was when we took the whole line, length times the outer length, we get a number that's equal to the whole times the outer of the other one. Okay, let's see if it works every time. Let's try circle B. Let's say, take a pen, color pencil and color the segment that's 8. Okay, let's try do this color. <coughs> and then it says take another color and color in the 13.86. There we go. So now we're going to do the same thing and see if we get the same result. <coughs> How long is the entire length segment of, for the line on the right, this line here? It's 8 plus 16. Okay, so what's 8 plus 16? 24. So the whole thing is 24. Now multiply it by the outer line segment, and the outer line segment is 8. The outer piece for that segment is 8. So what's 24 times 8? 192. Okay. Now let's do it to the other one. How long is the entire length segment for the one on the left? Well, this starts from here and it stops. So 13.86. Let's write that down. Now multiply it with the outer line segment. Well, the outer line segment is happens to be the whole thing. So the outer is 13.86 as well. So let's multiply 13.86 times 13.86. I'm going to cheat and use a calculator and see what I get. 192.0, which is close enough. 
or did I read this wrong? Yeah, I did it right. 192. I just wrote the answer wrong up here. Sorry about that. So 192.0, which is the same as 192. So, something interesting is happening, huh? So when we take the outer piece times the whole line segment, it equals for both segments. Both segments equal each other when you take the outer times the whole. Okay. Let's try circle C. Now look at this situation. Okay. We have no outer piece at all. All of these line segments are inside the circle. Okay. So we don't have any outer or, or hole. We just have everything on the inside. So this line segment here got cut into two pieces, 15 and 8. And there's another one cut into 6 and 20. So I want you to highlight your colors. This whole line segment, let's make it yellow. And this whole line segment, let's make it purple. There's a really a, a, a important point because I want you to recognize that 15 and 8 goes together because they're on the same line. And 6 and 20 go together because they go in the same line. If you pick 15 and 6 or, or, or 8 and 20, it's going to be wrong because they belong to different line segments. Okay. Now, what it says is <coughs> multiply the two pieces of the line segment together. So multiply the 15 and the 8. Let's see what we get. 15 times 8 is 120. Okay. Well, let's see if we get the same answer if we multiply the other two pieces for the purple line segment. 6 times 20 is also 120. Cool. They equal. Okay, that happens a lot. A lot of things are equaling. Okay, just make sure you pick the right numbers. Only the ones that belong on the same line segment get multiplied together. Okay, so you learn a lot today. And here is what you have to memorize, all right? There are kind of four formulas you have to memorize. So when you have line segments that intersect outside the circle, right here, this is outside, we get an outer line segment and a whole line segment. Multiply it and you will get the same answer as the, outer, the other outer times the whole. Now when the lines intersect inside, you just take the two pieces on the same segment, multiply it, and you get the same answer as the two pieces on the other line segment. Back to art, the first two things we learned were the line segments intersect inside the circle to get an inside angle. You add the arcs and divide by two. And when the line segments intersect outside the circle, you take the big arc minus a small arc, divide by two, and you get the outside angle. Okay, so that's it. Don't go away. Take the online quiz and you get three points. I'll see you tomorrow.